Hello everyone, this is Jack. Well, in this video, I'm going to share my end of season harvest with all of you. Now, we harvested all of this just today and it's the end of summer and we are getting ready to plant our fall garden. So we harvested everything and we're starting over with our fall garden now. So let me take you on a journey on this. Well, these persimmon, they still have about another month to go, but let's go get some jujubes and some apples. Well, this jujube tree is loaded. There are lots of jujubes on this tree. However, the jujubes and apples did suffer this year because we had some late heat in September and that is not good for jujubes and apples. So a lot of them got dried up because if I was still watering them, but it was still not enough because we got over 110 degrees, which is not normal for our area. It was so abnormal and these streets suffer a lot. They like cool climate. However, let's harvest them. Well, you can harvest jujubes as soon as they start to get this little brownish color and they come right off the tree. If you haven't had these, I will say definitely give these a shot if you can source them in your area. And they are a tree. They're kind of like apples, but let me give it a shot. Very crunchy. A little bit drier than apples. They're not as juicy as apples, but they have a very distinct flavor. Not like the sweetness of an apple. It's more of like a wholesome, bearish kind of flavor. Very good eating. Well, let's put these in the bank. Next up, apples. Well, these apples also suffered from the late heat, the late summer heat. A look at this. It's like totally scrooged from one side. So you gotta have to go around to look for good apples. This is what I'm talking about. Look at this. Completely sunburnt in the heat. However, there are some good ones. The ones that got shaded out from the sun. So let's grab some of these really nice apples. And we have five different varieties. Well, let's put these in the bank too. Next up, tomatoes. Well, check out these really nice tomatoes. I've said this many times in my videos that the tomato that you grow yourself tastes much better than the store-bought tomatoes because store-bought tomatoes taste like water. These actually taste like tomatoes. Come on, you can't be up. Go in. All of these chickens and ducks, they think I brought them kitchen scraps. But I'm just here making video, so they are a little disappointed. We got these new batch of chickens and they are very colorful and really friendly as well. Well, say hello to the subscribers. All of these chickens, that white crusted black polish is super friendly. They spend all their day just scratching through and finding bugs. That's how they like to spend their day. Well, they are the ducks. Next up, zucchini. And we have a lot growing. We have about eight plants. Oh man. Let me tell you how much zucchini they can produce. I actually have a video on five ways you can cook fresh zucchini and squash. So check that out if you're interested. Well, we have so much growing that we're actually cutting some up and freezing it so we can use it early next year when we don't have zucchini in March and April. Next up, spaghetti squash. And these squashes are super tasty and they can last up to three months or even more in a cool, dark and dry place, such as your pantry. No refrigeration needed. Now the same is true with burner squash. Let's check out this one. Such a nice burner squash. So I think I'm gonna grab this one. Check it out. And these also last three months or even longer in your pantry in a cool, dark and dry place. You can enjoy stocking up your pantry with these. I usually stock up my pantry in fall with these and they last all winter long. Next up, eggplants. Well, check out how many eggplants are on just this one plant. This is loaded with eggplants. There are about 20 eggplants on this thing. Well, let me get some of these eggplants and these will keep producing until the first frost. You can just twist them, pull on them and they just come right out. Next up, okra. Well, okra is slowing down in production and it's actually going to seed because of the cooler climate we have. So I'm harvesting any okra that's good to eat now and I'm pulling out all of my okra plants. Next up, chilies. And these chili plants are loaded as well and they will keep producing until the first frost. So I'm harvesting as many chilies as I can and right before the first frost, I will take these plants indoors. You can always overwinter your chili plants as well. They are perennials if you can protect them from frost and you can always replant them in spring. We have seven kinds of chilies that we are growing here and I'm harvesting as many chilies as I can. I also have a video on five vegetables you can overwinter as well. So check that out if you're interested. 
Next up, Tendoras. Now, my South Indian friends actually turned me to this. Actually, one of my South Indian subscribers, Murli, he gave me this Tendora plant. And it was about a little bitty, about six inches tall. In about three months, it's like overgrown on this trellis. And we usually don't eat Tendoras in the north, in the north India. We actually eat another variety called Tinda. But these Tendoras are also super delicious. And it's a treat to actually have them in the house. So let's grab some of these. Well, there's one hiding here and they're green in color so they kind of blend in with the plant so you actually kind of have to look for them. Well, here's a nice one. So let me grab this one as well. Well, let me grab these curry leaves here as well. And these are really good to add to your soup, your curries and also mixed vegetable soup or squash soup or pumpkin soup, any kind of soup. And they give a really nice and deep flavor to your soup. Well, I got sage, mint, and basil grain here. So let's take cuttings of these herbs. Well, sage is really good to add to your meals. And this is also a perennial. So I planted it once and it keeps coming back. So it's a really good addition to the garden. A well, mint is also a perennial. It doesn't grow during the winter. However, as long as the roots are in the ground, it will keep coming back year after year. And mint is really good to add to your tea or even make mint chutney, also known as mint sauce. Well, let's grab some basil here. I sometimes usually keep these basil stems in my greenhouse and I propagate them just by placing them in water. And that way I don't have to reseed basil. I can just keep planting the same basil year after year. Of course, you can always grow them from seed as well. And basil is really good to make some basil pesto and also to add to your pasta, soups, or salads. Let's also grab some rosemary. And rosemary is really good to add to your roasted potatoes. I love rosemary in my potatoes. It's so flavorful and gives another dimension to potatoes as well. Next up, grapes. And we have 10 different varieties of grapes growing. And I also made a video of six varieties of grapes that you must grow. Well, right now at the end of the season, the only grapes that's left on the vines is red flame. So let's harvest some. Now, when harvesting grapes, you want to select the grapes that are ripe. If they're underripe, they're going to be sour. But when they're fully ripe, that's when they're extra sweet. Next up, strawberries. And these strawberries will also keep producing until the very first frost. And these strawberries are the sweetest strawberries I've ever had. I actually never liked strawberries until I grew my own. So I highly recommend growing your own strawberries. The variety I'm growing here is Seascape, which is ever bearing. And it produces from April all the way until October in zone nine, which might be a little bit less in other zones, but it's a long producing strawberry. Amazing. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed the journey with me on harvesting all of these. And I'll see you in another video.